Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a floor and ceiling equation. Two in one. So we have the floor value of x minus the ceiling value of x over 2 is equal to 3 and we're going to be looking for x values. So we've done a lot of videos on floor and ceiling so hopefully you'll remember the definition but just to quickly recap if you have the floor function it's just going to round the number down to the nearest integer and if you have the ceiling function it's going to round it up to the nearest integer. In this case the floor value and the ceiling value are going to be different and they're going to be consecutive integers. If the number is an integer, of course, the floor and the ceiling values are going to be equal to that same integer. So I'm going to start by using the definition of floor function. The floor value of something is equal to 3, then what kind of numbers can have the floor value of 3? Those numbers have to be between 3 and 4. But of course, in this case, it is equal to 3 it can equal 3 but not equal to 4 because in that case it would be the floor value of 4 so since the floor value of this is equal to 3 then that expression needs to be between 3 and 4 like this okay now let's go ahead and do some substitution as you know substitution is my favorite method let's go ahead and call this expression n now what does that give us well by saying that the ceiling of x over 2 equals n you can also use the definition of ceiling and this means that x over 2 now think about a number that whose ceiling value is going to be n obviously that needs to be greater than n minus 1 right because anything greater than n minus 1 if n is an integer its ceiling value is going to be n as long as it is less than or equal to n because if it exceeds n then its ceiling value is going to be n plus 1 or larger okay so from here we're getting this interesting inequality but we also have another inequality which we didn't write down yet from this one so let's go ahead and write that down as well and see what that's going to give us so from here we can say that 3 is less than or equal to x minus n and that is less than 4. so i now, right now i have two inequalities hopefully i can solve these inequalities but let's go ahead and in each one, I would like to isolate x. So add n to both sides here. I'm, go I'm going to be getting this. And let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 2 here. And we should be getting this one. So I kind of have like a system of inequalities, but I have to be careful because n needs to be an integer in this case. Of course, we had to say that at the beginning, but hopefully that... Um, you already knew that. So, what am I going to do with this system of inequalities? Well, we have to solve it, right? How do you solve these kinds of inequalities? Well, first of all, n is an integer and we're looking for x. So, notice that this implies something real cool. For example, x is greater than n plus 3 and less than 2n. So, we have like a lower bound here and an upper bound sort of here. That means that the lower bound is always going to be less than the upper bound. So from here, we're getting that n is greater than 3. That's nice. Let's keep it for now, and then we'll put it together with the other result. And we can say the same thing here. We have a lower bound and an upper bound. In comparing those, I can say that 2n minus 2 must be less than n plus 4. And this implies that n is less than 6. Of course, both of these have to happen at the same time. Otherwise, we're not going to have the system. So this tells you that n can be 4 or 5, right? So what happens if n is equal to 4? Great, let's take a look. So uh, hopefully this made sense. We wrote, you know, by setting this equal to n, we were able to get an inequality like this one by using the definition of the ceiling function. And then from this one, we were able to get another inequality. We isolated x in both inequalities, and we did get a system of two inequalities in which n is an integer and we're looking for the x values of course x doesn't have to be an integer but n has to be an integer and as a result we got that n needs to be greater than 3 and at the same time less than 6 which implies that n is equal to 4 or n is equal to 5 notice the difference between and and or they're different uh, th there are different things, right, basically. So what happens if n is equal to 4? So we're going to look at it case by case. If n is equal to 4, we can just go ahead and replace n with 4 in, these, in this system. Let's see what happens. This gives us um, 7, x, and 8. And of course, there's an and in between them. 
And when you replace n with 4 here, that's going to give you 6 and 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So now you've got a system of inequalities again, but this time, instead of having an n in it, it's just numerical value, so you can just go ahead and intersect those inequalities, and that's going to give you the interval between 7 and 8. 7 is included because 7 is between 6 and 8, but 8 is not included because none of these inequalities or both of these inequalities don't give me uh, 8. So that's going to be part of the solution, and then we're just going to put it together at the end, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the case where n equals 5, and you do the same replacements pretty much. If you do, well, for n equals 5, you're going to be getting something like 8 is, you know, x is between 8 and 10, and between 8 and 9. Of course, I kind of wrote them backwards, but anyways, hopefully you got the idea. Here, um, what happens is, if you look at this uh, intersection here, obviously 8 is not included, and 9 is not included either, because here, even though 9 is between 8 and 10, here we don't have the equality. So when finding the intersection, we can just say that x must be between 8 and 9 strictly, which means we don't have the equality. Okay, so now let's put it together, and the solution set for x is going to be the following. All the x values such that, such that, x is between 7 and 8, or between 8 and 9. Now what is that supposed to mean? x can be 7, x can be 7.5, 7.9, x cannot be 8. It could be 7.999 and you can basically test it out in the equation, but it can't be equal to 8 or 9. Alright? So the only integer solution from here is going to be 7. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.